Okay, the uh, first thing we need to do is actually download the um, update instructions and I would suggest having a read through this. Um, that should help a lot as far as the procedure for um, installing the uh, firmware update on the Storm OSD. I'll have a link for these in the description. So what I've done here is I've actually downloaded uh, the updater for the Storm. So that's all ready to go and I've also downloaded the driver. So the first thing we need to do is get the driver installed. So I'll copy that, just dump it here, paste, and what I'll do is delete this zip file, so I don't really need that anymore. That's gone, and what we do is basically install the driver. Actually, I'll say no to that. What I'm in the habit of doing, especially under Windows 7, I run as administrator just in case. Now, it's not actually doing anything on this system, I think, as I've already installed the driver. So, you get the idea as far as how to install the driver goes. So, do that. Once you've done that, you'll need to actually connect the uh, USB updater. And that will then install fine onto your system. Now, you're going to update for one of two reasons. A, you've got beta software, uh, firmware on your system, or you want to update to a newer firmware. In this case, we're going to be updating to the current firmware, which is 1.04. So what we're going to do is basically put the OSD um, on a nice flat surface. In this case, we're using uh, my aircraft. We're plugging the power into it, the power cable. And we're also plugging in, in this instance, you don't have to do this, the video connection for the camera and also for the video transmitter. This is just so we can monitor what's going on after we do the firmware update. So they're plugged in now. It's just a matter of now um, applying power to the actual board. So we connect the battery and this will power up the board. Now you need to make sure your programmer is also plugged into your uh, computer. And all you need to do there is basically plug that into those pins extremely carefully. And once you've got it in there, basically don't touch it, don't move it, don't touch the model at all from here on in. So next thing you do is double click the uh, EXE, accept the prompt and it's ready to update, click the update and nothing will happen for a little while, don't panic, don't touch the model, just wait and after a few seconds there you go, it starts doing the update so just let it run through and do the update, make sure you don't move anything, don't touch anything um, just the way that programmer is, I sort of don't trust the connections on that but look it should, should work fine, we actually, actually updated more than one of these um, OSDs and we didn't brick any of those so basically don't touch anything and you should be good to go and wait until it finishes. I'll just speed this video up a bit. So what I've done here is basically sped things up and that will just make it a little bit less painful to watch this video. So just be patient, don't move anything like what I've just said and once it's finished, you'll, a finished button will come up, a prompt and just OK that and you should be pretty much good to go. Next thing we need to do is basically unplug the power and once you've got the power unplugged, remove the programmer and that's pretty much it. The next thing we've got to do is basically power it back up again and it'll boot up and just wait a little while. Don't touch the model during this boot up process. It needs to go through this calibration. Don't touch it, leave it level and flat. Once it finishes doing that, it'll come up. As you can see, it's been updated to version 1.04 and that's pretty much it. Okay, so the first option in your menu is the battery scale in milliamp hours and it's basically showing uh, when power consumption is reached. Um, so if you set it to say uh, 3,500 uh, milliamp hours, once 3,500 milliamp hours is used up, uh, what you'll find is a, a battery com capacity uh, indicator in the bottom left hand corner of the screen will flash to indicate that the battery is depleted. So that just allows you to set that value depending on the size battery you're using. You've also got your percentage value. Now what you can do there is change that anywhere within the range of um, 0 to 200 uh, percent. What most people find is this uh, OSD tends to underread the amount of milliamp hours used. So in my, in my case I'm actually running mine at 133 percent. So you can confirm that based on what the OSD tells you as far as how much milliamp hours you've actually used. And then when you charge it, you'll know what the difference is. So uh, that'll allow you to actually calibrate that. Okay, so the next one is reset the value, the milliamp hours, and you can reset that back to zero again. 
So servo center position, uh, what that basically allows you to, to do is reset the servo center position of your aircraft after your first uh, flight. Obviously what you're going to do is basically trim the aircraft out and when you land you basically uh, um, hit the servo center um, option on the OSD and what that'll do is reset to the new servo center position based on how you've actually trimmed the aircraft. Next two options are your um, aileron and elevator uh, reversing and basically what that indicator tells you is whether you've reversed your um, ailerons or elevator and that's pretty self-explanatory. Now the way you're going to work out whether reversing is working in the correct direction is basically put the aircraft into PA mode and check it that way and that way you'll know the OSD has actually got the reversing set correctly. So your next option is your trim option and that allows you to um, uh, adjust the trim settings for the aircraft as in the uh, roll and pitch. Uh, you can also do fine adjustments or the auto. Now if you've got your OSD mounted level in your aircraft you shouldn't really have to play around with this but in some aircraft you may need to trim this out. Next option is your Alibon. Now if you're flying a traditional aircraft you're going to have that set to no. If you're flying a wing um, like I am going to be in this instance I'll have that set to yes. Now when you set it to yes what you need to make sure is you don't actually have mixing in your radio. So you don't want to be mixing your Alavon mixing on the radio. Uh, basically enable this and this will set the mixing up for you. You may need to do some reverse reversing of servos uh, on your radio but that should be about it because it'll manage the mixing for you. Okay your next option is your um, roll gain and um, you can basically adjust that. Now the first setting uh, for your roll gain is a percentage value and what that's basically telling you is the roll sensitivity. You can up that or down the value. Um, the next option is your angle. That's the maximum angle uh, for the roll. And the pitch will be exactly the same thing. You've got your pitch uh, gain, which just adjusts the pitch sensitivity. And you've got your maximum pitch angle. Uh, next option is your RTH. Um, and what you can do is basically set an altitude there. Uh, by default, it's set to 100 meters. So basically, if it goes into RTH mode um, and you lose, R, well, you lose RSSI and it's gone to fail safe or what have you, uh, as soon as it goes into RTH mode, it'll either drop down to 100 meters in this, in this instance or um, gain altitude to 100 meters. Um, reset gyros, it's something that you need to do to calibrate the gyros and if you're going to do that, keep the aircraft nice and level, make sure it's not moving so you don't want to probably do this outside and just hit the OK. I've only ever had to do this once. Um, RSSI, that allows you to set your RSSI min and max values. Now if you've got RSSI coming out of your receiver, this is where um, uh, once you've got it hooked up you can actually set your max value. So the next page, the next option is your max recording and what that'll do is basically record all your maximums uh, maximum distance traveled um, maximum distance from home maximum altitude maximum speed etc et it just gives you a um, overview at the end of the flight heading hold you can have that enabled if you like and basically what that means is if you put the aircraft into PA mode it'll lock in the heading. So it'll stay, um, if, it's, if it's going north, say for argument's sakes, it'll stay locked into north and keep correcting um, itself so it keeps tracking towards north. So altitude hold is exactly the same thing. It'll basically hold altitude for you. And in video format, I have mine set to auto and that works fine on running a PAL video, cam uh, video on mine. And that's pretty much a basic rundown on how the OSD works. So I hope you found that useful. Um, I can't think of anything else I can actually cover with this, but the next video will actually cover the flight performance of this OSD. So as far as my views on this OSD, look, it's a really, really good OSD. I'm very happy with it. Uh, in the next video, you'll see exactly how well this OSD performs. It seems to be very assertive in the way it actually manages uh, the aircraft. Uh, look, I think once you see the next video, that'll pretty much speak for itself. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, don't forget to thumbs up and subscribe and any comments down below. Thank you. I want you to record it again for me just in case. Mm -hmm. when, we, no, when we do the next one, you know what I mean? Just in case anything we missed, we can always edit in between. Yep. This is our workbench. <laughs> Have a little bird there. She's the apprentice. She's the apprentice. <laughs> Give me five.
Come on, give it a five. No, she doesn't like you now. She's going to add updates to it, but it's yes. huge ones. Well, that, maybe that's what Paul's got, is that, you know, like mine's older. Pick update. And he's just a step up. So, mm. yes. Just not. Wait, do nothing. Uh, and before you know it, the magic happens. <laughs> Sweet. Ha, <laughs> ha. It's nerve-wracking waiting for that. I was sort of... Cause it's not working. Well, Stop. look at it's the pin working. arrangements. Have you seen them, Thomas? Like, they're hopeless. Don't breathe, by the way. It's like putting four toothpicks in a hole and going, yeah, I hope that works. What do you mean, don't breathe? And this is Jason's one that we're going to brick. <laughs> <laughs> we've already done this to two other OSDs and we've wrecked those ones, so this is the third one we're going to wreck. <laughs> <laughs> third time lucky. Third time lucky. I don't think I did that.